Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? This is Watch, and what you guys are looking at right now is the first computer case that I ever owned. It's from the late 90s, and after years and years of usage, I've been still putting it to good use by using it as a benchmarking platform for all of the latest PC hardware reviews and benchmarks that we do on our channel. And uh, one of the things that I've been wondering for a couple of months now is what is the possibility of taking a standard ATX case like this and transforming it into an open airframe which is more ideal for my benchmarking needs. So here I'm going to show you on how I created an open air PC case using exclusively the materials out of uh, the standard ATX case that you'd find literally for free. So if you're interested in seeing how this was accomplished, let's get right into this video. Now the first thing that I did is evaluate the overall design and structure of the original case itself. And as I was deconstructing the case, I had kind of an idea at the back of my head, but kind of viewing how the case is actually put together in the first place kind of gives you a good direction on where you want to go for your case inevitably. Now, one of the really interesting thing about this case and probably one of the main reasons why I want to use this as a benchmarking platform in the first place is that it actually has a removable motherboard tray, a feature that's uh, definitely missing from today's modern PC cases. Now, to begin with, we're just going to take out all the components that we can take out with just a Phillips head screwdriver. So the plastic front panel of the case was pretty easy to remove, just basically four screws there. And also the top panel was also, again, very easy to remove, just two screws. After that, I remove some of the other unnecessary stuff such as the hard drive cage, the power supply unit, and the CD-ROM drive. And here you can see we have the case pretty much stripped out in terms of what we can remove with a screwdriver. And you can see that it's a pretty good solid frame and a good structure to overall start with. And now we want to kind of plan out and formulate a design for our open case benchmarking platform. And you can do this in a number of ways. You can take a piece of paper and start drawing away a design that you like. Or you could do what I did is I used a free 3D modeling program called SketchUp, which allows you to draw a 3D model. And it's a really simple and easy 3D modeling software out there, especially for beginners. And here you can see the final kind of design approach that I'm going to go with my case. It's a fairly simple overall design. It's made of really core structural components, and we can use everything that's on the original case to make this case, which is definitely pretty cool. It's mainly comprised of an upper level and a lower level. The upper level is designed for the uh, removal motherboard tray so you'll have mounting points that are already in the original case where you can slide in that removable motherboard tray and we're going to reuse the back plate of the original case to have a support for our graphics cards and the input and output shield for the motherboard itself. The bottom portion of the case I think will be good for housing our power supply units and uh, any hard drives or SSDs we'll probably have as well as kind of cleaning up any extra cables that we might need in the future. And just for the uh, bottom portion of the case, I'm just going to recycle one of the side panels and cut it in two to have some kind of floor structure so everything on top has somewhere to sit on. And I'm pretty happy with the overall design. So all we need to do is just deconstruct all the individual structural components we're going to need. And I have to keep in mind that all the components that you're looking at right now has to be recycled from that old case. And I think it's definitely doable because the new case will certainly be smaller than the original case. So we shouldn't have too many issues with having enough materials to work with. The next thing that I need to do was completely disassemble the case. And now we're not working with screws. We're going to need to remove the rivets that hold the core structural components components of the original case. And to do that is pretty simple. All you need is a drill bit that is the same diameter as the rivets themselves. So I'm going to be using an eighth inch drill bit and using a cordless drill. I pretty much uh, can easily remove all the rivets that hold this PC case together. And I want to emphasize the point is when you're dealing with uh, any kind of equipment like this and drilling holes in metal, you definitely want to make sure you're wearing some sort of eye protection. And after removing about 30 rivets, we finally have all of the key components of the new case laid out right in front of us and all we have to do is pretty much mark them and cut them to size according to the designs we formulated earlier. Now to cut the metal case was pretty simple. I was just using an angle grinder to make that happen. Again, when you're using heavy duty equipment like this, you want to make sure you're wearing the appropriate safety gear, such as eye protection and safety gloves. And once I had all the right pieces cut, to put everything back together again was pretty straightforward. I used the same method that was used to make the original case, which was using rivets. Specifically, I use eighth inch steel rivets. And basically how riveting works is by using a riveting gun, you basically compress the rivet between two pieces 
pieces of sheet metal and uh, there's a point where it can't compress anymore so it'll break off automatically and at that point you have a pretty strong bond now you're going to need uh, multiple rivets to get added strength and rigidity and uh, you can basically drill more holes i'm using a lot of the existing holes that were drilled but you can basically drill as many holes as you want and fit as many rivets as you need and about 40 rivets later we have our final design that we originally conceived on the computer and all we have to do is give it a couple of coats of black paint and leave it to dry for about six to eight hours now one of the issues you're going to have when dealing with uh, sheet metal is you're going to have really sharp corners and in order to pick this thing up without completely bleeding to death you're going to have to combat this issue. One of the things that I did was basically use some foam tape which is used for a lot of plumbing applications to wrap around pipes but this is a really simple and cheap method to basically wrap all around the sharp edges and it'll definitely clean up the overall look. And the foam tape also adds some grip which is going to be good if you want to use it for some feet and uh, use a couple of pieces at the bottom portion of the case so you can put the power supply on top of it so nothing will really scratch the components or the case itself. Now after that I want to have some kind of way where I can power up and uh, restart the actual system itself so I basically soldered the original front panel connectors to an old uh, button that I had lying around I'm going to use this for my power button and I'm using a old a guitar toggle switch for my reset uh, button so basically just drilled the holes for those uh, switches themselves and I even drilled two little holes for the power and hard drive activity LED lights and after that I was pretty much done and here is the final result of this project and there's still a lot of things that we could do to optimize this case further but for now I'm going to call this thing the MW Tech Open Air Case Mark 1 and some of the cool features on this case still has to be that removal motherboard tray feature and uh, when we remove it you have access to the lower levels which houses our power supply our SSDs and there's plenty of room for other stuff in the future so lots of flexibility in terms of what kind of components you can fit you can put in uh, extended ATX motherboard Board, any kind of extreme custom CPU cooler that you can devise, the biggest graphics card you can find, literally the sky is the limit with this thing. But on that guys, that's really it. Please let me know if you have any suggestions or any kind of modifications you want me to make for the Mark II version of this open case. I think there's definitely a lot of possibilities going forward, but I'm pretty happy with the overall design and it's certainly a functional uh, kind of case right now as it stands. But again, love to hear all your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Make sure to give us a thumbs up and uh, favorite the video as well. And uh, if you want to kind of pursue this on your own, definitely let me know. and. Uh, if you have any questions at all feel free to ask me anytime the best way to contact me is on twitter and if you want to support the channel we actually have a patreon campaign going on right now so uh, that will be in the description below if you need uh, more information about that but again thanks so much for your support thanks for watching our videos and we'll see you later take care